What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at exercises to improve wrist range of motion. So if you've had a fracture or a sprain, or maybe you just have wrist pain and you're worried that you've lost some mobility, then you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for today's exercises. When we think about the wrist joint, there are technically four movements that the wrist can go through. I'm actually gonna cover six movements in this video because there are two others associated with the forearm that can often be limited when people hurt their wrist joint. So what we'll look at first in the sagittal plane, we're gonna look at flexion. So bending the wrist down. For this movement, the normal range is somewhere between 80 to 90 degrees. We'll look at wrist extension. This is gonna be a little bit less. The wrist doesn't go quite as far, so this will be somewhere in the 70 to 80 degree range for normal range of motion. Then if you have your palm facing forward, we have ulnar deviation. The ulna bone is over here. So ulnar deviation, we can move a little bit farther. This is gonna be around 30 to 40 degrees. And then radial deviation is going towards our thumb, and this is gonna be closer to 20 to 30 degrees. Now the other two movements that aren't really the wrist joint but are more the two forearm joints, one is supination, so the ability to turn your palm up. We need this to be able to carry things and use our hand throughout life. So supination is gonna be close to 90 degrees, 80 to 90. And then pronation will be a little bit less, rotating palm down, and that will be somewhere closer to 70 to 80 degrees. Again, a lot of people who have wrist fractures or injuries will lose some of this motion. It's, uh, there are two that you also need to really work on. So we'll uh, get into exercises for those six movements. For our first two movements, wrist extension and wrist flexion, you're gonna position yourself so that you're on a surface like a bench or a chair at the edge of the table. You want your hand to be off of the edge so that the wrist can move freely. So for wrist extension, this is bringing the wrist up towards the back of the forearm. You wanna make sure to keep your fingers lightly tucked into a fist. If you straighten your fingers, it will actually stretch the wrist, the finger flexor tendons, and you won't be able to move your joint as far. So you wanna tuck the fingers in, and then first, just look at active range of motion. So first we can just work on active mobility. How far can you move the joint through, range, through that range of motion just using your muscles? Usually we can't move as far actively as we can with passive range of motion, but first just work on this. And then if you really have a restriction based on those range of motion values I mentioned earlier, then you'll use your other hand to push and stretch the joint. Now with joints, it usually works better to do low load, long duration stretches. So you can go up here right to the point of discomfort and you can hold for you know up to two to 10 minutes. So it's much longer than a muscle stretch. So that one is wrist extension coming up that direction. For wrist flexion, it usually works a little easier to flip so that your palm is up. And then what you're gonna do is bring the wrist up into flexion. For this one, you can allow your fingers to kind of go out. If they're tight in a fist, you won't be able to move as far because it will tension the wrist, the finger extensor muscles. So just let your fingers kind of relax, come up as far as you can actively, and then you can apply over pressure to help with flexion. You can do it this way, or you can do it this way. This actually might be easier. You might like it better palm down. So move as far as you can into flexion, and then give some over pressure. This one will move farther, like I said, usually around 80 to 90 degrees. 90 degrees, again, you can just hold here and let it stretch. Okay, so those are our first two, wrist extension and wrist flexion. For radial and ulnar deviation, we're just gonna turn our uh, hand so that the pinky side is down, and we're gonna be working back and forth through active mobility first. So remember, radial deviation is moving towards the radius, which is the thumb side. Ulnar deviation is towards the pinky side. We'll always have more mobility with ulnar deviation than we will with radial. Same idea, if you hit a spot where ah, it's stiff and I can't get my muscles to move it farther, then just use the other hand to stretch into that motion. So again, you can do a longer hold here. You don't wanna push into extreme pain with joints, just go to the point of moderate discomfort, kinda of hold there for you know as long as you can. And then again, same thing with ulnar deviation, work through that active mobility and if you hit a spot where you just can't push it any farther, then you can apply from the top position, just push towards so that you're bending towards that, that pinky towards the forearm. And again, you might get a stretch up here on top near the thumb tendons, but um, if your joint is stiff, you'll probably feel it kind of more in the joint region. Okay, so those are our next two 
we have radial and ulnar deviation, and then when we combine that with flexion and extension, those are the four primary wrist movements, but next we'll look at pronation and supination. Before I get into the last two movements, just want to mention that my book is out and available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. It has rehab programs with pictures of me doing the exercises for each body region. Today we're talking about the wrist joint. If we go back to the wrist chapter, we will see that there is a carpal tunnel syndrome program and a wrist pain program. This wrist pain program is going to go through a lot of the exercises we're covering in today's YouTube video. It's going to help people with sprains and pain in the wrist. You'll see soft tissue mobilizations, active mobility drills for the movements we're talking about in today's video. Again, with pictures of me doing the exercises and instructions. Every program in the book has three phases and is basically what you'd get if you came to see me in physical therapy. So if you'd like to have a book at home that allows you to do your own rehab for the 50 most common conditions, I will put a link for the book down in the description. These are our last two. Again, these are really more of our forearm joints. We have a proximal radial ulnar joint and a distal radial ulnar joint. So they influence both our elbow and our wrist. For supination, this is turning so that our palm is facing up. Again, just for the starting out here, you can just work active mobility. How far can I twist actively into supination? How far can I go into pronation? If you hit a spot, again, where you can't move actively, just simply take your other hand and kind of twist. Usually it works to kind of grab right up by the base of the thumb and kind of, it's almost like you're joint locking yourself, but you're just going to twist those forearm joints. You're trying not to move your shoulder a whole lot. You want to try and focus on having just the forearm move. So you just kind of apply some leverage there and stretch. Obviously, I can go farther than normal range of motion. Most people, when they have an injury, they'll get stuck somewhere like this and you'll just be holding it. And your goal is to slowly over time get closer and closer to that 90 degrees of full supination so that your palm is facing the ceiling. For pronation, same kind of thing. I've had lots of people over the years with wrist fractures, especially where they lose this motion. And so you just have to grab that, kind of grab by the right at the wrist joint and just twist to the point of discomfort, hold it, and slowly over time get closer to that full range of motion of 70 to 80 degrees. Okay, you guys, those are the six movements that are really important to work if you've lost mobility in your wrist joint. Give them a try, and uh, as always, if you have any questions, put them down in the comment section, and I'll try to get back to you. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.